Welcome back to my road to completion guide for Bloodborne. This is episode two. The first thing that we want to do in this episode is kill the two enemies in this section. Then there's going to be some items that I want you guys to pick up. But in order to kill these enemies, the best strategy is to go ahead and shorten the axe, hold down the R2 button. That way, when you guys hit the enemies, you'll knock them down. So with the next enemy, I'm going to show you what can happen if you miss with your charged R2 attack, okay? I'm locked on, I miss, and then boom, I'm going to dash forward past the enemy, okay? In most cases, if you miss your attack or you feel like you're going to be hit by the enemy, dodge past them, okay? Don't back dodge. In some situations, you're going to need to back dodge, but in most situations, dodging past the enemy is going to be your safest play, okay? So anytime you miss your attack, tap that O button and dodge past the enemy. After you kill both of the enemies, grab the six blood vials and then run over here and pick up the hunter set and then quickly move out of the way. There is an invisible enemy in the background. You just saw the attack there that can kill you in one hit. If you don't move after you grab that hunter set, you're going to take a death, okay? So grab that hunter set, move out of the way I'll explain why that enemy is invisible later on in the run before we advance any further go ahead and take a second and replace your current outfit with the hunter set that we just picked up and notice in the middle of the screen each time you do that you're going to be seeing a lot of numbers in blue that lets you know that you're getting an added benefit to all of your defenses So the next thing that we need to do is collect 13 bloodstone shards. The problem is that the enemies in this area are quite tough, especially if you're a beginner player. So we're gonna play this thing out stealthy, okay? So with the first enemy, wait for him to walk up the stairs and then you guys will be able to pick up two bloodstone shards to the left of the gate. Now we can make our way through the gate. We're gonna run all the way to the bottom of the stairs. There's gonna be a statue on the right. Okay, there's some enemies off in the distance. We're not worried about them. See the statue at the bottom of the stairs. Now notice there's an enemy off in the distance above my hat. See that? Way off in the distance. Now watch. As soon as I go toward the statue, that enemy moves. Okay, so we want that enemy to move positions so we can make a push for the next bloodstone shard. So now we have one enemy that we need to kill before we can pick up the next three bloodstone shards. It doesn't matter if your axe is in the long form or the short form. Just come over here, use your strongest attack, your R2, kill the enemy and pick up those bloodstone shards. So if you notice off in the distance, we have another item that we can pick up. That's five bloodstone shards. And then the camera angle that I'm showing you here, that's where we're going to run to so that we can avoid the enemy. Okay, so just hold down the O button and sprint. Grab the five bloodstone shards, hug the railing. You can either jump through these wooden crates or bash them with your hunter axe. Just make it through there quick so that the enemy won't be able to bother you guys. Check to make sure you still have your Molotov cocktails equipped in your quick items menu. If you have all that stuff set up, set up a safety save, and then I'll show you guys how to pick up some more bloodstone shards. So once you come back from the safety save, I want you guys to focus on the small enemy. It's going to try to run away from you, so you have to be fast when you throw that Molotov cocktail. If it runs too far away and you're not able to kill it, load up your safety save, try it again. You just want to make sure that you kill that enemy with one Molotov cocktail and then run over here as quick as you can, grab the bloodstone shards, and that way you guys can avoid that enemy. So at this point, we have a little run that we need to make. I'm going to let you guys enjoy the gameplay. I'll hop back in with commentary after our next safety save. So the run that we're about to make is very misleading, okay? It seems like there's only a few enemies in front of me, and as long as you can pass them, you're good to go. But the problem is that once you hit the steps, there's going to be two dogs that spawn in, and there's an enemy at the top of the stairs that can shoot you. So you're going to have to run in like a zigzag pattern and try to avoid the random dogs. If you guys die here, just load up your safety save, okay? Once you make it to the door, you should be safe. Just start spamming the O button so you guys can keep rolling and sprint through uh, that doorway. Now the dogs are not going to be able to catch up to you. We're going to come down here, talk to the NPC. He's going to give us some dialogue options. We're going to choose cooperate, and that's going to give us three fire papers. Cooperate. Oh, take this to celebrate. 
Beast hunting is a now you have to be careful when you backtrack because the two dogs are still going to be in that room. But I want you to watch what happens here. They cannot come through the doorway. And that's because there's an NPC to my left. And there's an imaginary barrier there where they can't come through. So it gives you guys total advantage play. Just go ahead and lock on to both of those dogs. Just don't get too close to them because they can still hit you. But they just can't come outside of that doorway. Charge the R2 and that'll be enough to kill them both. Go ahead and interact with the floor switch. That's going to open up a secret passage. Grab this item. It's called a madman's knowledge. This is just a random gesture that I do from time to time, guys. Uh, I have a bad habit of spamming the X button, and I don't always hold my controller level, so end up doing those random gestures. But make sure you guys grab the madman's knowledge. Watch out for this enemy. You can kill him with two R2s. And then there's going to be another madman's knowledge in the back of the room. Now we just want to follow the secret passageway. Once you make it to the bottom of the steps, there's going to be an item directly in front of you called the Tempering Blood Gemstone. We already have the red blood gem from the previous episode. Now we have a second gem. These gems allow us to make our axe a lot stronger. And I'm going to show you what the gems do here. Let's go into your menu, scroll over to the right. You'll see we have the Tempering Blood Gemstone, physical attack up 0.7%. It's not a lot, but it definitely helps. Red Blood Gem, physical attack up 2.7%. Rally Potential, 1.8%. Now let me explain what Rally Potential is, okay? So if you look in the top left-hand side of the screen, we got my health bar, okay? It's a deep, dark red color, and there's a little white line, okay? Now I'm gonna take some fall damage here in a second. So just act like I just got hit by an enemy, okay? So I'm gonna take this fall damage. Notice the white bar. See how there's red on the right of that white bar? There's also red to the left of that white bar, okay? So the red that's on the left of that white bar is the health that I have. The red that shows up on the right side of that white bar is the health I just lost. Guys, if this enemy chases you into this room, just exit the game super quick. It'll despawn the enemy. You guys can just continue back in and continue on with the guide. Uh, back to what I was saying about rally potential, though. So let's say that I have 100% health and an enemy hits me and does 50% damage, okay? If I can hit that enemy, let's say within the next two to four seconds, okay, it depends on percentages and stuff like that. There's a chance I'll be able to get a majority of that health back. Each time I get a successful hit, I gain more health back. So this encourages you guys to be aggressive with this game, okay? It's a great way to get your health back without having to use blood vials. Let's go ahead and open up the double doors, and then I want you guys to make sure that you equip your Molotov cocktails again. Then we're going to set up a safety save, and I'll talk to you guys on the other side. So we have another one of those small enemies that we need to kill, so just sprint over here, press square to throw the Molotov cocktail, kill the enemy. When you guys drop down, you're going to be able to pick up three bloodstone shards off that corpse, and then to the left is going to be one more bloodstone shard. So the next item that we need to pick up is called the Hunter's Torch. This will be your fourth Hunter weapon out of 26. There's two enemies down here, so I encourage you guys to extend the Hunter's Axe. Make sure that you guys are charging that up, so that way you guys can kill both enemies at the same time. Remember, anytime you hit them with this attack, you're going to knock them down. That gives you guys a chance to get your stamina back and reset. Make sure you kill both of these enemies, and the Hunter's Torch is going to be on the left. So at this point in the game, we just want to make it back to the lamp so we can get back to the hunter's dream. We want to level up our character, uh, level up our axe and stuff like that so we can be a little bit stronger heading into this next area. There's going to be some cold blood dew up here when you climb this ladder. I haven't really explained what cold blood dew is, but I'll explain that to you guys once we get back to the hunter's dream. Just make sure you pick that up, make it back to the lamp, return to the hunter's dream, and I'll meet up with you guys when we get there. So the first thing that we want to do once we make it back to the hunter's dream is we want to use the cold blood dew that we just picked up. Notice it says use to gain blood echoes. Okay. Notice in the top right hand side of the screen, we have 5859. I pop it. I get an extra 500. So instead of having to run out and kill an enemy to get those 500 echoes, we just got them for free. We're also going to use the two madmen's knowledge that we picked up earlier. You're going to see in the top right, we now have six. 
You see the six up there with the eyeball to the left? That's inside. That's another form of currency for this game. So you have your echoes on top and then you have your insight on bottom. There's two merchants inside of the Hunter's Dream, and I'm gonna show you guys how to buy stuff from both of them in just a second. So if you look in the top right hand side of the screen, you'll see Bloodstone Shard. It says three and 19, okay? So if we wanna upgrade our Hunter Axe to plus one, we have to use three of our 19 shards. The next step is five of 16. The next step is eight of 11, you see that? So the number that's in the parentheses is how many bloodstone shards we had, and the number on the left is how much it cost to upgrade our hunter axe. And there is a trophy for upgrading a weapon in this game all the way to plus 10, and so we currently have the hunter axe at plus three. So we're gonna be working on that throughout the entire campaign. Once we hit plus 10, we'll be able to pick up that trophy. So now we wanna fortify our blood gems that we picked up earlier into our hunter axe. You can see we have two slots at the top, blood gem imprint one, Blood Gem Imprint 2. For the first slot, I want you guys to choose the Red Blood Gem. and the second slot, I want you guys to choose the Tempering Blood Gemstone. Just around the corner is a merchant, or the game calls them Bath Messengers, and you can purchase stuff from this particular Bath Messenger using the inside, okay? The one that's below us is the one that you use your Echoes for. So I want you guys to purchase the Gascoigne Set, you go over right there. There's four items you can choose. It's going to cost you six inside. You have exactly six. So go ahead and purchase all of that. Now we want to pay a visit to the other bath messenger. We're going to use our blood echoes this time to make this purchase. We need to purchase one item. It's called the Yarnum cap. Just get through all these menus, purchase items, scroll over to the gear, or the attire, I should say. It's the very top one, Yarnum Hunter Cap. It's gonna be 500. Go ahead and buy that, and we wanna go ahead and equip that right away. And then we're gonna sell all the attire that we have left in our inventory. We're gonna sell it so we can pick up some extra Blood Echoes, and we can use that to level up. Now we can head over and talk to the antique doll and level up our vitality to plus 19. I am a doll, honorable hunter, and I will chant you will hunt beasts to embolden you. Very well, let me stand close. So that wraps up everything that we need to do inside the hunter's dream. We're going to go ahead and fast travel back over to the previous boss fight room. From there, we're going to pick up a few items and then I'm going to show you guys how to farm for blood vials, quick silver bullets and more echoes. So there is an item that I want you guys to pick up at the bottom of the stairs. The problem is that it's guarded by two enemies and they can be quite deadly if they start ganging up on you guys. So make sure you set up a safety save. So the item that we're picking up is called the Bold Hunter's Mark. We're gonna be getting two of those. If you've played Dark Souls, you're familiar with the Homer Bone. This item works the exact same way. So for those of you who have never played Dark Souls, let me explain what this item does. So we just came from a lamp in the previous room. If I were to pick up this item now and use it, it would just take me back to that lamp. So it's a great way for you to be able to explore the area Okay, let's say you're sitting on 100,000 blood echoes, you've only got two blood vials left, there's 10 enemies in the room with you, and you're scared you're gonna die. You know if you die, you're gonna have to come back to this area, recover your blood stain. Well, if you get nervous, all you have to do is pop one of those bold hunters mark, go back to the previous lamp, and now you're safe. 
This item also works great for farming, okay? It makes it a lot quicker. Let me explain how this process works. So the enemies will respawn in the area each time you travel back to the hunter's dream. So I just killed three enemies. I'm about to kill the fourth one here. If I were to go back to the lamp in the previous room, fast travel back to the hunter's dream, and then travel back to this area, the enemies would respawn. The problem with this method is that you have to sit through two loading screens, okay? Remember, one loading screen is gonna happen when you leave an area and go back to the hunter's dream. And then, of course, another loading screen is gonna happen when you leave the hunter's dream and come back to an area. You have to do all that just to get the enemies to respawn. Of course, we don't want that. We want our farming routes to be efficient. We wanna maximize the amount of echoes and items we get on each farming trip, right? We don't wanna be sitting in loading screens. So the good thing about the Bold Hunter's Mark is that when you use the Bold Hunter's Mark and it takes you back to the previous lamp, it also resets all the enemies, spawns them all in again, and of course that makes the farming route a lot more efficient because now you don't have to sit through loading screens. The cool thing is that eventually we'll be able to purchase bold hunters marks from the bath messengers in the hunter's dream using our blood echoes but for now we're kind of limited to just picking up that item in the environment but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't farm okay it just means we're going to have to take a little bit more time but anytime you guys can farm in this game and grab some extra echoes and level up your character it just makes the game a lot easier for you okay make sure you grab that bloodstone shard we're going to open up this gate and then you guys will immediately know where you are this is the shortcut okay so now we have access to the left and right path from the lamp then we're going to talk to this npc and pick up the uh, hunter weapon called flame sprayer this will be your fifth hunter weapon out of 26. This time is cursed. Whatever you're, whatever can be gained. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm before I. After you guys pick up the flame sprayer, head back to the hunter's dream, then immediately fast travel back here to Central Yarnum. All right, guys, this is our very first farming spot in the game. Now, I'm only gonna run this farming spot one time. We're gonna be picking up some items as well, but you guys can run this farming spot as many times as you want to, okay? Just don't use your bold hunter's mark. We just talked about those. Uh, just run back to the lamp. You know, you're gonna have to sit through some loading screens, but the longer you can stay here, okay, you guys will be able to level up even more, and that's gonna make your playthrough a lot easier. Now the great thing about this farming spot is that all these enemies drop blood vials or they have a chance of dropping blood vials. Sometimes these two enemies will drop shining coins and there's some other miscellaneous things that these enemies will drop but for the most part you're going to be getting a lot of blood vials which means if these enemies hit you a few times while you're farming you're just going to be picking up blood vials. You'll be able to get your health back right no problem. Remember we also have that rally mechanic that's built into the game so it's possible to get up there and take a shot hit the enemy get some of your health back. So this is a great way for you guys to maximize your blood vials, quicksilver bullets, and blood echoes. Now it's very important that all of us complete this farming trip at least one time, okay? Because we have to pick up some more items. We need some pungent blood cocktails. We're gonna be getting two of those, and of course I'll explain what they do later on in the guide. And then three more bloodstone shards. But after we complete this farming trip, you're gonna have to determine where you stand with this game so far. Has it been tough? Uh, have you been getting hit a lot? Are you worried about your health? Are you worried about the damage you're doing to the enemies? Maybe you want to do more damage to the enemies. What is your weak point when it comes to this game? And then you want to focus on leveling up that stat back at the hunter's dream. Now remember, we can't use our bold hunter's marks for this farming spot because the two that we just picked up, I need you guys to have those later on in the guide. So you're gonna have to do a lot of running around if you decide to farm here, okay? I can tell you that currently, you guys have enough stats to make it through to the next farming route, which is like 19,000 blood echoes per trip. So my advice to you guys is to go ahead and push on through the guide, try your best to make it to the next farming spot, because that's not gonna be optional. We're all gonna stop there. By the time we leave that farming spot, we're all gonna have the same stats. But if you guys really feel like you need the stats, maybe you need more health, maybe you want more strength, then by all means, stay here and farm as long as you want. Now I can tell you that once we hit farming spot number two, by the time we leave that farming spot, we're gonna be sitting at 35 vitality and 35 strength. 
So if you decide to stay here and farm, those are the only two stats that you wanna level up and you wanna focus on getting your strength to 35 before you get your vitality to 35, okay? So make the strength your priority, then focus on your health. You guys can clearly see this is a really safe farming spot. I think we started off with what, eight or nine blood vials? And I think by the time I pick up the blood vials off this enemy, I'll be sitting at 20. Now you're probably thinking that the blood echoes that we just picked up is not a lot. And it really isn't in the grand scheme of things, guys. I think we started this farming route off with about 2,100 blood echoes and now we're sitting at 34, 36. Here's a bloodstone shard, by the way, that I want you guys to pick up. So it's less than 1,500 or we'll just say around 1,500. Sometimes these enemies will give you more blood echoes depending on how you kill them. Let's just call it 1,500 for easy math. By the way, here's two more bloodstone shards for you guys. But you got to think about it. When we level up back at the Antique Doll in the Hunter's Dream, it's only costing us about 2,000 Blood Echoes to level up one time. So, you know, roughly every two trips, you're going to be gaining a level. Now, if you really want to maximize your efficiency with this farming route, sell things to the Bath Messengers back at the Hunter's Dream. Remember, they're going to give you guys Blood Echoes each time you sell them items, okay? Remember, we can only carry 20 Blood Vials at a time. Anything above 20 goes into our storage, which... Um, basically feeds into our inventory each time we travel to and from the hunter's dream but 20 is all we can carry around for now okay so let's say you're sitting on 50 blood vials okay just sell 30 of them right take those blood echoes and level your character up you can also do the same thing with your quicksilver bullets okay we're gonna need 20 quicksilver bullets once we get to the next boss fight as long as you have 20, you're good to go. Okay, anything extra, sell it. Remember, the enemy that's in the wheelchair back in that farming spot that we were just at in Central Yarnum, he will always drop four Quicksilver bullets. So maximize that too, guys. Sell those extra blood vials, sell those extra Quicksilver bullets, and level your character up a lot quicker. So now it's time to make a choice, guys. For those of you who want to farm, you want to fast travel to Central Yarnum. For those of you who don't want to farm, you just want to continue with the guide, you want to fast travel to Old Yarnum. So we have a very long run coming up that we need to make. Uh, before we make the run, I want you guys to pick up six blood vials over in the corner. Then we're gonna set up a safety save and then I'll explain to you guys how to make this run as safe as possible. So in order to make this run successfully, you need to watch your stamina, okay? It's all about stamina management. So we're gonna get past the enemy on the bridge. Sometimes he'll hit you, that's fine. Just keep on going, guys. Watch the stamina bar. I'm gonna fill up as soon as I get to the bottom of the stairs. See that? Keep running. And then before I drop off this platform, I'm gonna fill up all the way. Then I'm gonna spam the O button when I drop off. That way I roll when I hit the ground. If you hit the ground and you don't roll, you're gonna stagger. And that's gonna allow that enemy to hit you with the gunfire and it could possibly kill you. Now once you finish that section, wait over here in the corner and see what this enemy does. Sometimes he's not gonna push you at all, okay? If he doesn't push you guys, then just climb the ladder and continue. If he does push you, dodge around and give it a few seconds, eventually he'll tether back to his starting location and now he won't be a threat anymore. Now the reason why you don't wanna climb the ladder immediately is because oftentimes he'll shoot you, okay? Trying to get you off the ladder. If you haven't healed after taking fall damage from the previous section, his gunfire and the damage you take from falling off this new ladder will be enough to kill you and then of course you guys have to reset and do it all over again. So it's better to just wait in the corner, okay? Notice that I've equipped my Hunter Blunderbuss. We're gonna use that in just a second and now I'm setting up a safety save. Now, before you climb this ladder, you have to make sure that the Hunter Blunderbuss is in your left hand, okay? So you have to hit left on your D-pad and cycle through. You'll have an empty hand, and then you'll see the Hunter Blunderbuss. You have to make sure that you see it in your hand before you climb the ladder. When you get to the top of the ladder, press O one time and roll toward this enemy, and then spam the L2 button on your controller three times. That should be enough to shoot this enemy off the edge. You'll see your blood echoes kick in there in the top 875, and then I want you guys to exit the game and continue back in. Once you guys continue back in, pick up the powder keg hunter badge. We need that hunter badge because it allows us to buy extra weapons from the bath messengers back at the hunter's dream, and we're gonna use that uh, pretty much at the end of the run to pick up a trophy, okay? Remember, if you're not able to shoot that enemy off the edge of the tower, Okay, if he starts dodging around or something like that, just go back to your safety save and try again. Okay, remember you have to roll one time at the top of the ladder, okay, and then spam the L2 button three times. That should be enough to knock him off the edge. Now this room is very misleading because when you drop down, you see one enemy, but it's like, hey, that enemy can't get to me. He's no threat to me. And it's easy to want to continue with this room. But what you don't see is below us on the right, 
is like 12 enemies, okay? And as soon as you drop down, they're all gonna attack you at the same time. So the trick is to wait here. I think I show them to you, see all these enemies? So the trick is to wait here. They will actually uh, take another path and they'll path up to the section that we just killed that other enemy. And then you can kill them all at once. Now you don't have to kill all the enemies, you just wanna thin them out enough so that you guys can make this run safely. We're gonna pick up Ritual Blood number one, we're gonna get two of those off the altar. Very important that you pick up that item. Then we're gonna exit this room and wait a few seconds, okay? Sometimes these enemies will try to chase you out here. You just wanna look back and make sure nobody's following you. The last thing that you guys wanna have happen here is you're trying to kill these enemies while other enemies are sneaking up from behind. After you guys pick up those two bloodstone shards, we're gonna walk over here, pick up six more blood vials, then I want you guys to set up another safety save. So what we need to do at this point is wait for the enemy to walk to the left. You see how he just walked to the left around the corner there? Now we can run out without having to worry about any of the enemies attacking us. We want to pick up this item. This is going to be pungent blood cocktail. You're going to get two of those and then follow my path exactly. Okay, notice that I'm sticking to the right side of this map because there are still two enemies walking to my left down that path. So you want to be walking as far away from them as you possibly can so they don't notice you. Grab the two bloodstone shards at the dead end and then backtrack. And now we want to run past both of these enemies. Now I want you to pay close attention here, okay? As soon as I clear the bridge, I'm going to hug the left side of this path. There's going to be an enemy that jumps out of the door to the right. If you're on the left side of the path, he will not bother you, okay? Just keep on running. We have another enemy we can run past here. And then as soon as you make it to the steps, set up a safety save. Do not try to hit the small enemy that you see on the steps. Once we come back in from the safety save, we're gonna kill that enemy and pick up some more bloodstone shards. So after you guys pick up the three bloodstone shards, come over here and grab two more bold hunters marks. And then we're gonna slowly walk down the path, okay? Notice the enemy off in the distance. Eventually the enemy will walk to the right. Give it a few seconds and then pick up the quick silver bullets on your left. Now I want you guys to notice that I get three bullets and seven bullets. Did you guys see that? Remember I only had 17 bullets before I picked up that item. So the three bullets that were on top went into my current inventory. Remember, you max out at 20. 17 plus 3 is 20, okay? The other seven bullets just went into my storage. You're not losing the bullets. They're just stored in your inventory box back at the Hunter's Dream, okay? Every time you travel to and from the Hunter's Dream, the game will automatically max out your character. So let's say that I have zero bullets when I travel back to the Hunter's Dream, and let's say I have 20 bullets in my storage box, the game will automatically give me those 20 Quicksilver bullets. So it might seem like you're picking up items sometime and the game is just not adding them to your inventory, but it's just because you're maxed out at 20, guys. The game is still storing them for you back at the Hunter's Dream. Let's kill this enemy, and then we're going to pick up two more Bloodstone Shards off the corpse. Now we can backtrack to the lamp. We're going to fast travel to the Hunter's Dream, level up a little bit, and then we have a boss fight.
So the first thing that we want to do is fortify our flame sprayer to plus three. That's going to allow that flame sprayer to do more damage, and that's going to be the hunter weapon that we use to defeat the next boss. After that, I just want you guys to sell two of your fire papers, and then we're going to level up at the antique doll. We want to level up our arcane to plus eight. Now we have to level up arcane to plus eight because we cannot use the flame sprayer unless we have an arcane of at least eight or higher. After you're done leveling up, fast travel back to old Yarnum. All right, guys, we have a very long run that we need to make. We're not going to be picking up any items, just running to the boss fight arena. So just follow the gameplay on the screen, and I'll talk to you guys once we get to the boss. So before we take on this boss, we want to set things up, okay? I'm going to show you guys exactly what to do. Now, you should have four Molotov cocktails when you make it to this boss. We talked about that back in episode one. If you don't, feel free to use one of your bold hunter's marks, travel back to the hunter's dream, you know, go to Central Yarnum, farm for some blood echoes, just pull enough blood echoes together so that you're able to buy those four Molotov cocktails. The next thing I want you to do is press up on the D-pad. Notice in the top left hand side of the screen we have 20 quicksilver bullets and then it says plus 5 underneath, okay? What that's doing is we're using our health to get more blood bullets, okay? So now we have 25 blood bullets instead of 20. Then I want you guys to equip the flame sprayer plus 3, make sure your Molotov cocktails are in your quick item slot, and then set up a safety save. So this boss fight is extremely simple, okay? I want you to rush the boss. He's gonna have an animation where he screams at you. Go ahead and lock on. And then what we're gonna do is throw one of our Molotov cocktails. Then we're gonna back step twice, throw another Molotov cocktail, rinse and repeat. You guys see the pattern, okay? Sometimes he's gonna charge you. If he does, I want you guys to move to the left of him, okay? Make sure that you hit him with all four of these Molotov cocktails, then run to the back of the map and wait. All we're doing is waiting to see which side of the column he decides to walk past. See how he's walking to the left of the column, so I broke to the right, okay? You just want to get past this enemy. He's going to be walking behind you guys, but he's super slow. Now, once you make it back over here behind this altar, he will actually forget that you're on the map. So at this point, you're completely safe as long as you did that correctly, okay? If you didn't, he's going to keep walking, and eventually he'll come back here with you and then repeat it, right? Go to the back end of the map. Wait for him to come over there and then rush back. You want this setup though. You want him to turn around and face in the opposite direction. You want to have the antidotes from the corpse here that's behind the altar. You want to put the antidotes in your first slot. And then you want to put the pungent blood cocktail in your second slot. Now, if you look in the top left hand side of the screen, you'll see that I'm switching between the antidote and the cocktail. All I'm doing is pressing down on my D-pad guys. That cycles through all of your quick items. So basically what you want to do is you want to be on your pungent blood cocktail. You want to stand on this tile and you want to throw one of the pungent blood cocktails off into the distance. Now your goal is to try to throw the cocktail into the corner of the room, but you can see there that I missed. That's fine. You just want to make sure that the second cocktail that you toss is in the corner. Now this is the most important part of the fight. Notice that my quicksilver bullets are counting down. I just hit 20. I'm going to throw another cocktail into the corner. Notice 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, throw another cocktail. Each time I decrease my quicksilver bullet count by five, I'm going to toss another cocktail into the corner of this room. Then I'm going to continue to spray the enemy with the flame sprayer by holding down L2. Now, sometimes you'll see a bar show up at the top of the screen. You guys see that above my head? That's your poison bar. If that ever fills up, you're going to be poisoned, okay? If that happens, press down on the D-pad, press square, 
use an antidote, or you can just keep healing with triangle. You just want to make sure that you kill that boss as fast as possible, keep him in a corner, and that's exactly what those cocktails do, guys. Anytime you throw a cocktail out on the map, as long as you're dealing with like a beast type enemy, they will be attracted to the blood, okay? And that keeps them distracted and allows you guys to do maximum damage. Remember, you guys have a safety save set up just outside of the boss arena, so feel free to try this fight as many times as you need to. I know it's very technical. There's a lot of steps you have to complete in this fight, but if you guys can pull off all those steps, it makes the fight extremely easy, okay? Head back to the Hunter's Dream. We're going to level up our strength to plus 17. Now, some of you may already have your strength at 20 or 25, or maybe you took it all the way to 35 You know, by farming in Central Yarnum. That's fine. If your stats are already higher than 17, then don't worry about leveling up at all. Now, the last thing that we need to do is fast travel over to the Cathedral Ward. I want you guys to set up a safety save when you get there, and I'll meet you guys right back here in Episode 3. Be good.